Hi, welcome to One Eye on the Page. I'm Scott. It is Monday, May 8th. I have quite a few books to read this week, including uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. We'll also be reading Authentically Izzy by Pepper Basham, uh, working on Alison Cochran's uh, Kiss for Once for Me, Louder and Funnier by P.G. Woodhouse, and a few other ones. I haven't read that much today and I'm actually doing this in the future because I made a uh, intro video for this but it got screwed up so I'm talking about stuff that has already happened so when you see the shirt next week it's not me just wearing it two weeks in a row I just I filmed this at a time you know let's get going Good morning, it's May 9th. A uh, little bit of progress on the books that I am reading. I have picked up uh, 50 Words for Rain by Ash Lemmy. I've read one or two pages. I picked it up like two days ago, but I started reading something else and got kind of engrossed in that. And I don't want to read too many novels at one time. So I've kind of put 50 Words for Rain on the back burner a little bit, which is another reason I don't want to do TBRs because I have instant gratification needs. And if I have a book that I'd rather read, I'm gonna read that instead. So that's why, even though I may talk about books that I wanna read, I'm not gonna do TBRs. So I picked up that book and I have been reading uh, Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran, uh, which I'm reading for a, uh, a video for five romance novels that I'm going to read since romance is not a genre that I generally read in. It's it's very engrossing. Um, I started with this book because I've read a book by her before that I liked. I'm pretty much, I think, like maybe 25% of the way in, perhaps a little bit less. I really like it. It really pulls me in. The main character feels a little bit like me which kind of makes me feel uncomfortable and, you know, also pulls me in. Uh, it's written in second person, which is something I don't generally like, but you don't really notice it's in second person, which is not the issue with a lot of second person novels that I've read. Those novels, for example, A, a Maid's Diary, which I recently read, it just hits you in the head with it and it sticks out. And this one, I just didn't really notice it at all, just in passing really. So I'm not gonna discuss this book too much since I'm doing it for another video. I'm also reading The Subtle, the Subtle Art of Not Giving Enough, which when I first talked about it, I said it, I assumed it was gonna be like a 20 page paper that was expanded to long form and that's what it's feeling like but I also wasn't prepared for I wasn't prepared for how annoyed I would be by the author I'm going to finish the book because I have to finish it because I said I would I don't think that I'm going to get anything further out of this than what I've already done in the first I believe 30 pages that I've read so far I think I've gotten the gist of everything there is to know about this book in those pages. And the rest is just going to be saying the same thing over and over again. You can check back on this later if I come back and say I was wrong. I don't think I'm going to. Another nonfiction book I'm reading is Louder and Funnier by P.G. Woodhouse. It's basically about his Hollywood days. He doesn't have fond memories about his Hollywood days. And it kind of permeates through this book. I've read, I think, five essays so far. If you're a moderate fan of Woodhouse, I say continue to read the novels and short stories. This book, at least so far, doesn't give anything that would say you need to read his nonfiction. And finally, not finally, because I'm actually on Kindle. I'm reading uh, Spoon River Anthology by Edgar Lee Masters, I believe. 
I could get that name wrong, uh, which is a collection of uh, free verse poetry uh, about the residents of Spoon River, uh, most of whom, at least from what I'm reading now and also remembering from having read a poem or two many, many years ago, are uh, dead characters. Uh, I've only read about five or six poems so far. And it's interesting. Um, I'm not a huge fan of poetry. I have my favorite authors. I haven't really read anything by him beyond what I believe, I'm not sure, believe I have read before. So the last book I'm actually reading, not reading, listening to, is uh, the, Marlo, the Marlo Mystery Club, uh, which is great. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. I haven't heard of the author Robert Thorogood before, but so far, and I am, I believe, maybe halfway through the novel, it's it's fascinating. I've explained it for, before. It's about a uh, Miss Marple-like character, but she also has uh, cohorts in her little mystery solving, and she's not She's not as smart, I guess I would say, as Miss Marble, or it, not as intuitive when it comes to crime. But she's she is a smart character. She has a, a dog walker and a vicar's wife that she is working with. And there's also a, a police officer who, for once, in unlike many mysteries that I've read, actually is not working with them, but also not opposed to them, and basically saying get out of this so um and the characters have depth which is not something you commonly find in uh mysteries at least not for the de detectives um my vision for this is pretty high so i'm hoping i don't get disappointed but so far this has been a great book i'll see you later It's Wednesday, May 10th. Made a little bit of progress in books today. I have read about, I believe, two-thirds of the Marlowe Murder Club. Um, I'm liking it quite a lot now. Uh, all the characters are clicking. The plot is clicking. I think I know the solution. Um, if it turns out that it's the case I might be a little bit disappointed in it or it came to me in a flash so we'll see I'll have to wait till I get the end to see whether or not I like it an excellent mystery so far and I've had a lot of issues finding modern mysteries that are enjoyable in the same way as uh, mysteries like the Agatha Christie mysteries that I have read before. I'm also uh, a little bit more than two thirds of the way through Kiss Her Once for Me. It shouldn't work. It should not work. It's pretty ridiculous. It's sort of a Hallmark Christmas movie with a queer romance and ruminations about mental health. So it doesn't seem like it should work, but it is working. I know my daughter Robin has read it, she loves it. I really like it so far, and I'm just going to see how it carries me through the rest of it. I've also made a little bit of progress in the nonfiction books that I'm reading, uh, Louder and Funnier by Woodhouse. I'm not enjoying it much. His humor, which seems so effortless in his fiction, feels very forced in his nonfiction, or at least this nonfiction book I'm reading right now. I'm going to finish it. It's not horrible, but it's just not the woodhouse that I'm used to. The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. I'm really disliking this book. It doesn't particularly say much of interest. And it says it again and again and again. There's nothing really mind-blowingly noteworthy about what the author is saying. He comes across as a dick. I don't know if that's his intent, but I'm just like, why do I care what this dick has to say? So <laughs> that's what I've been doing today. I expect to finish both Marlowe Murder Club and give her a 
kiss for me tomorrow. I will give a review at least of Marlowe Murder Club then. I don't know if I will give a review of Kiss Her Once for me just because, like I said, I'm saving that for another video. I will give I will give you probably a star rating and a little brief highlight, but I won't go in depth on the book. So uh, I will talk to you again tomorrow. It's Thursday, May 11th. I have finished two books today. Uh, the first book is Alison Cochran's Kiss Her Once For Me, which is a romance novel. So I will say that the book was very good. If you love Hallmark Christmas movies, you will love this. But there's also a lot more depth to this than what you normally find in a Hallmark Christmas movie. The second book that I finished was Robert Thorogood's uh, the Marlowe Murder Club. The Marlowe Murder Club is about uh, Judith Potts, who is a 77-year-old woman, pretty much a Miss Marple type, except uh, a lot more strong-willed and not as soft-spoken. Although Miss Marple being soft-spoken is still pretty hard-edged. She is living next to a man who is killed. The police believe that it may be suicide, but it turns out that he is murder, and uh, Judah starts to investigate the death. Uh, she is joined by uh, Susie, a dog walker, and Bex, a vicar's wife. Uh, so they form a little kind of crime-solving team, and they also work a little bit with, a little bit uh, outside what she feels comfort with, uh, Tanika, who is a uh, detective. Um, there is another murder. It looks like there is a serial killer on the loose. Without without getting into the details of it, I was not expecting much in this, quite honestly, because I haven't had a good run of mysteries ever since I finished up the Agatha Christie books that I was reading. It's written well, and the characters have more depth than you would possibly normally expect from your, your average mystery. I had a little trouble deciding what I'm going to rate this as because love the book, but three quarters of the way through the book, I solved it. I don't think that it was any great detective skills on my part. I didn't pick up any clues that the average reader might not see. I just got it in a flash. Did not know who the murderer was three quarters of the way through and then boom i knew and what i decided then that this happened this happened this happened this happened all turned out to be true i can't hold that against the book because as i said i don't think there was any particular skill on my part to get the answer and i also don't think that it was because of any particular detriment on the writer's part that didn't hide me from getting the answer. Um, I do know that I'm going to be purchasing the next book in this series, but the rating, I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a 4.5. I, I want to give it a 5, but I'm going to give it a 4.5. By the time that I am done with this vlog at the end of the week, I may be saying, no, I changed my mind. But as of right now, 4.5. There are tons of likable characters in here. Okay, I won't say there are, there are many likable characters in here. The clues, not only to the murder, but to the characters themselves, especially, you know, the three main women, and to some extent, Tanika, the, the detective. This was written as a book that pretty much knew that it was going to be getting at least a sequel because we have set up for the future for these four characters, at least. Plus, you have the vicar, who doesn't play a large part in the novel, but you see some of the domestic life that these women have beyond just what they're solving this murder mystery you know they have their own troubles in life 
and they have their own secrets and I'm thinking that some of those secrets will play in the future and I can't tell you the secrets because of pretty big secrets I mean we I can tell you like with Bex Bex is she's the perfect vicar's wife and she feels trapped in that life but she also doesn't know that she feels trapped in that life and Susie the dog walker she is a bit estranged from her kids and I can't really tell you about Judith all I can do is suggest that you read the book I will get more in depth in this probably when I go over the books at my end of month wrap up in which I may have changed the rating by then um, I've also started reading <laughs> Authentically Izzy by Pepper Basham and I believe I mentioned this uh, in, in last week's video uh, the reason I got this book was because the main character in it sounds a lot like my daughter Robin I didn't really research the novel much beyond that could be a problem because the novel is an epistolary novel it's it's all it's not all letters it's all emails and texts and uh, dating profile exchanges up to the point I read I've read like uh, I haven't read I've listened to which listening to email exchanges is a little bit different than reading them I'm still enjoying it so far, but I'm seeing trouble ahead because for a person who has just said, I don't read a lot of romance novels, it's it's a romance novel uh, based on the approach it's going, but I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding how it's really going to get into the romance if it's all in written communication. It, it could work out. This book is I don't know how long it is on audiobook but I looked it up uh it's like 430 pages long which seems like a long book for emails and texts and dating messages but we will see reading emails is awkward in general to me so you have I assume and I have written emails that if we were to say them out loud just come out across as awkward so but I have started that today and I was listening to it while I was walking around the grocery store uh, I have not read either Woodhouse is louder and funnier today or the subtle art of not giving an F uh, I will probably read another chapter or so of them before I go to bed tonight I'm probably going to be reading chapter by chapter each day because they're not books that I'm particularly enjoying in their books that I can digest in those chapter forms. I've started reading the Spoon River Anthology by Edgar Lee Masters. Haven't really progressed much in that. That's probably another book that's going to take me the rest of the month read because I eat poetry like a piece of cake. I don't like cake so I was like Okay, I took a bite. I will come back. I'm also going to start reading Guy de Passant uh, short stories. Uh, I don't know anything about him. I believe that's all I'm reading right now. I'm reading like five or six books. So that's it for today. It's uh, Friday, May 12th. I, I'm recording, so obviously... Cats need to make the present. I will end you if you, you're going to do it, aren't you? Move away. Move up. <laughs> no, get away. Get it. Get it. I'm watching you. I'm about the third of the way through, actually, Izzy. Uh, for a novel that I felt that I wasn't going to enjoy simply because in a, it was an epistolary novel i had been enjoying it i i'm not fond of the need to do the too izzy from luke subject blah 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 date blah 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 every time there's an email and reading the 
physical book, I could just skip over that part. But I can just let my mind blank for a second while I'm listening to it. The problem I'm having is that I'm a third of the way through the novel. I'm kind of like, how can you continue this for, you know, however many more hours? The, the book's 430 pages, so a third of the way through your novel, I'm about 140 pages in or so. So it's got like 280, 290 pages left. Now I'm just like, I, I, I don't know where else you have to go. But I, I'm enjoying it so far. We shall see. I, I have hopes. Don't know what's going to happen. I have read further in Louder and Funnier and The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. I'm not really going to go over those because I don't want every vlog entry to be me complaining about those. So I will let myself get a little bit further along before I really comment on those more. I, I read a couple of pages of 50 Words for Rain and I started a short story by, and I'm really going to have to put a little, you know, uh, text there, actually spelling his name because I'm going to mispronounce it, but Guy de Maupassant, and I'm French too, part French. But anyway, uh, I, I've started a short story of his, and I've read more po poems in the Spoon R River anthology. So, you know, but other than that, I haven't uh, read much more uh, because it's the weekend coming up. I generally listen to audiobooks when I'm driving the kid to and from school. I don't tend to drive a lot on the weekend, so I probably won't listen to a lot more unless I go for a walk or something. So I probably won't progress a lot further in the audiobook, but I will pick up more physical books this weekend and read them. So that's it for today. Okay, it's a uh, Saturday, May 13th. Uh, I've progressed quite a bit in reading Ford and many different books, I, including Spoon River Anthology, uh, a short story collection, a little bit of Woodhouse's Louder and Funnier, and I made a lot of progress in uh, the subtle art of not giving an F, mainly because I just want to finish the book. I'm not going to really talk about that book because I will probably finish it, if not tomorrow, then two days from now, and I will have lots to rant about then. Um, I also finished uh, Authentically Izzy by Pepper Basham. Uh, I said yesterday that I don't remember how far along I said, but I was uh, about halfway through, I believe. I looked on Amazon and saw that I had some credits, so I was able to purchase the Kindle uh, version for a couple of bucks. So I went and did that. So I listened a little bit today but I also read it. I'm not going to give a rating to it yet. I'm going to give myself a day to you know percolate on that but I want to talk about you know as soon as I start talking all right so I want to talk a little bit about uh, Stephen King's Misery. I'll take you around here and show you why. If you haven't read Misery there's skipping over the other points that don't really matter for the purpose of this. There's a nurse uh, who has captured a, a writer. She wants him to write her a book, basically bringing back to life her favorite character who he has killed in a previous book. Uh, she's not happy with the way that he does it and explains, talking about cliffhangers that you, she used to see in movies, about being fair. If the hero finds a parachute under the uh, pilot seat in a plane that's crashing, it may not be realistic, but
but it's fair. But if we're shown in one uh, episode that the hero is is locked inside a, a train car that's been welded shut and it goes off uh, a cliff, but then the next week it comes and it shows him like escaping by forcing the, the door open with seconds to spare, even though the previous week had shown him going off the cliff. That's not fair. I talk about that to kind of talk about authentically Izzy. Because I explained yesterday, this is a, an epistolary novel until it's not. And to me, that's, that's not fair. You can't go over half the book being an epistolary novel and doing it throughout the rest of the book. But every once in a while, like, no, I'm just going to write this in the third person now. Uh, it, it's, it's not playing by the rules. You know, I know there aren't any rules to writing, but to me, it's like you presented this to me as an epistolary novel. And I said, that's going to be kind of hard to do with the romance book. And it was because you're like, oh, I don't know how to do this. So I'm just going to write this in third person for no reason other than it'd be hard. Uh, Stephen King did something like that with Christine. He he wrote it in thirds. The first third was written first person by the best friend of Arnie Cunningham, uh, who had bought the car, Christine. Uh, but he needed to be out of the way in the second half, you know, because if he wasn't out of the way, then well, he may be able to stop some of the stuff. So he had a, a, a football accident, which took him out of the way. But because Stephen King needed us to see some of the stuff that was happening in that second third of it, he just wrote it in third person. And then he went back to first person in the last third of it. And again, there are no rules. I guess it's fine that he does that but is it fair that depends on your point of view and that's the problem i'm having with authentically izzy is like it just it's not fair you know i don't i again i'm not going to read it until tomorrow at least probably because i time to ruminate i think i still enjoyed the book i do think that it's going to impact whatever rating i give it but I was uh, impressed. I went into it. I saw, saw that it was an epistolary novel. Discovered that the author is is a Christian writer. Often brings Christianity into her novels. Well, there was mention of church and God in this. I don't think it really played a huge role in it. It's two people meeting on a dating site. The woman was pretty much forced on there by her cousin who uh, she grew up with because uh, Izzy's uh, parents died when she was young. And it's her meeting this man, Brody. And I, I'm not going to, there's there's another man in the wings, but I'm not going to really spoil anything for you that she and Bro Brody are the couple of the novel. And he lives uh off on an island off of scotland so and she lives i believe in south carolina it's, it's somewhere where andy griffith was from so and so it's it's their relationship through uh at first dating messages then emails and texts and texts from her to her cousins and texts from him to his brother and mother and other family members and then of course third person accounts which uh, there's nothing particularly surprising about this novel and, and that can be okay i mean i i would think of it as well a, a, a beach read or as i like to think of an airplane read because uh it's comfort 
Like I used to, many years ago when I used to fly quite frequently, I would bring Robert P. Parker novels on there. They were short. Um, they didn't require a lot of thinking on my part and they were familiar. You know, obviously there were things that changed with each novel, but wasn't really surprised by what the characters do. So to me, this is kind of that equivalent of what you would find in a romance novel, except of course it's an epistolary novel and I have a problem with that. You, because you're not as you know, nitpicky as I am, I hope, because it's a hard life to lead, <laughs> may not see anything wrong with it, and this book will suit you fine. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've done today. I'm going to read a little bit more tonight before I go to bed. Uh, I, like I said, I should finish this idiotic, moronic, the solo art of not giving an F book probably tomorrow because I want to be done with it. And uh, I will grace you with my lovely discussion about that tomorrow. And I will also give you the rating for Authentically As You Met. It's Sunday, May 14th. Uh, just to go over something I said I was going to do. For Authentically Izzy, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. I had a lot of trouble getting over the epistolary and then all of a sudden using third-person narrative. Um, that plays a part of it, but also the overall story, well, interesting enough, just wasn't anything special. Stay away from there, Ron. Started the video, cat. Um, it wasn't anything special, 3.5. Uh, I haven't really read very much in anything else. I read a little bit of Spoon River Anthology last night, as well as uh, another essay in Louder and Funnier uh, by Woodhouse. I'm not enjoying the essays. One, his humor, which works in fiction, doesn't really work as much in essays, and he's writing about stuff that's not particularly interesting to me, such as Wimbledon and uh, Shakespeare. He he's see he's not writing fiction, but he's writing fictional essays meant to be entertaining that aren't quite as entertaining as you know, actual fiction. I started the Glass Ocean today. I just got my Audible credit in, so uh, I am listening to it and reading it. So I've just read the first chapter. Ron, cut it out, dude. Don't give me that look. So all that is taken care of. What I really want to talk about today is the subtle art of not giving an F. I'm going to go and give you the rating for it. I give it 0 0.5 stars out of 5. This was pure crap. He, I, I said at the beginning, uh, of this when I was talking about it in the blog last week, that I was afraid that the self-help book, I gotta stop doing that. The self-help book was going to be about 20 pages worth of information in a 200 page book. I may have been overestimating the 20 pages. There was never, nothing revolutionary about this. It was either common sense stuff or stuff that didn't make sense. There were no sources cited in this. At one point, he quotes Aristotle, except the simplest of Google searches would show you that's not actually an Aristotle quote. He also says, uh, that at one point he ended an essay with great power comes great responsibility. And he looked on Google to see who originally said it, but he didn't find anything. He didn't find anything for with great power comes great responsibility. How does Uncle Ben not show up if you do a Google search for that? Talks about how 
uh, meaningless his life was when he was having sex. He was having lots and lots and lots and lots of sex, but it didn't mean anything. Also, a chapter later, hey, he was having lots and lots and lots of sex. Did I mention he was having lots and lots and lots of sex? He was able to get all the time. For something that didn't really mean anything, he had to mention it like two dozen times. The man from this book is a misogynist. He's also, he, he says he didn't like get on the right path until he was like in his 20s. But then at the end of the book, he mentions his friend who died uh, when he was 19. And that made him take an evaluation of his life and make changes. And it's like, well, wait a minute, did you do it then or did you do it later? And it's just, it's some frat bro hopped up on Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro, sat down, chugged five or six beers, and wrote a book. It sucked. It's awful. If it helps you, good for you. Great. You know, you get help wherever you need to get help. Even if I don't like it, even if I think it sucks, however other people get help, that's fine. I'm never going to read this book again. I have to get this book out of my house. This, this is the worst book that I have read in a while. And I read Death of a Glutton by M.C. Beaton, which I thought that was the worst book that I had read in a while. And it just, it looks like a masterpiece next to this book. So that is this week's uh, vlog. If you like what I have to say, <laughs> and, and I apologize if you're a, a Mark Manson fan, um, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time on One Eye on the Page.